Let us evaluate circular functions. So these are the steps to evaluate circular functions. Given t, find the reference angle beta of t. The reference angle is the acute angle formed by the terminal side of your angle t and the horizontal axis. So this is the reference angle. Find the quadrant that contains the angle and determine the sign of the function in that quadrant. So why are we interested in knowing the quadrant? Just like what we talked about last time, the corresponding point for an angle has a set of coordinates x, y. And the cosine of t is the x coordinate. This is your cosine of t, and this one is your sine of t. So the x coordinate is your cosine. The y coordinate is your sine. And of course, you know that the sines, the sines of x and y depend on the quadrant that contains your point. So let us review this. So in the first quadrant, the x coordinates and the y coordinates of any point are greater than zero. So that means cosine is positive and sine is positive. In the second quadrant, cosine is negative because the x coordinates of the point is negative, but the sine is positive. Sine of t, I mean, okay? Now in the third quadrant, Cosine is negative, sine is negative, and in the fourth quadrant, cosine is positive and sine is negative. So knowing these two, the reference angle and the sine of your function, we will put them together and we will evaluate the function when t is equal to our reference angle and then we will affix the sign. Okay, so you will know it. You will know it when we do these examples. Evaluate cosine of 7 pi over 4. So the first thing to do is to find out the reference angle for 7 pi over 4. So 7 pi over 4, that's more than pi, okay? Because 4 pi over 4, that's, that's your pi. Okay, so this one is 4 pi over 4. And then you will add 3 fourths of a pi to make it to 7 pi over 4. Okay, so the, this is 3 pi over 4, okay, that is 4 pi over 4, so together they make 7 pi over 4. So what then is the reference angle? Where then is the reference angle? Well, this one, this is our reference angle. Uh, the angle formed by the horizontal axis and the terminal side of our angle is our reference angle, and this is equal to pi over 4. You know what the purpose of knowing the reference angle is so that you would know what corresponding point to use. And because we are talking about the cosine function, the cosine of pi over 4 is the x coordinate of the corresponding point. So this is your cosine of pi over 4. Since our point is in the fourth quadrant, our cosine function is positive. And so this is how you evaluate cosine of 7 pi over 4. It is equal to cosine of the reference angle, which is pi over 4. Okay, what's that? That's square root of 2 over 2. And then we append the sine. The sine is positive. How about tangent of 5 pi over 6? So again, the first thing to do is to find out what quadrant contains 5 pi over 6. So 5 pi over 6 is between pi and 1 half of pi. Okay, so it's somewhere here. So this is your 5 pi over 6. And where is your reference angle? Well, the reference angle is this one. The angle formed by the terminal side and the horizontal axis. And guess what? That is equal to pi over 6. 
The reference angle is pi over 6. Tangent function in the second quadrant is negative. So again, what is the purpose of knowing the reference angle? Because we want to know what is the corresponding point, and this is your corresponding point, okay? What is tangent? Tangent of pi over 6. It's y over x. Rationalizing the denominator, this will give you square root of 3 over 3. But this is tangent of pi over 6. Now, this is not yet tangent of 5 pi over 6. So what we do is, we append the sign. We affix the sign, and the sign is negative because tangent is negative in the second quadrant. How about this? Evaluate second of 5 pi over 6. Again, we already know 5 pi over 6. It is in the, okay, it is there in the second quadrant. Our reference angle is this one. The angle formed by the terminal side of your angle at the horizontal axis, and that is our beta. That is our reference angle. So again, the purpose of the reference angle is to point you to what corresponding point to use. So we will evaluate second of pi over 6 and then, so what is the sign of the second function in the second quadrant? Well, we know that second, okay, second of t is the reciprocal of cosine of t. One is positive. What, but what is cosine of t in the second quadrant? This one is negative. This one is uh, less than zero, less than zero. So second of t is negative in the second quadrant. Second of 5 pi over 6, what we shall do is we will evaluate what is second of pi over 6. And then we affix the sign. Now, what is cosine of pi over 6? It's square root of 3 over 2. And the reciprocal of that is 2 over square root of 3. But this is second of pi over 6. That is not yet a second of 5 pi over 6. So second of 5 pi over 6 is... 2 times square root of 3 over 3, and you affix the negative sign. How about sine of 5 pi over 2? So where is 5 pi over 2 in our rectangular coordinate system? 5 pi over 2 is more than 2 pi. Okay, so that's one revolution. 5 pi over 2 is equal to 4 pi over 2 plus pi over 2. And this is equal to 2 pi plus pi over 2. So that means 5 pi over 2 will take us one revolution, that's 2 pi, and then 1 half of pi. Okay, so 4 pi over 2, one revolution. Okay, that's 2 pi. And 1 half of pi. So what is now our reference angle? Our reference angle is the angle formed by the terminal side. Okay, this is your terminal side. And the horizontal axis. And that is pi over 2. Our reference angle is pi over 2. So we shall go to our table and look for the corresponding point. This is the corresponding point. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. Now, our uh, point, our corresponding point, would lie in the positive side of our y-axis. So, sine there, the y-coordinate of any point along the positive y-axis is positive. So, sine of t is positive. So, the value of sine of 5 pi over 2 is sine of pi over 2, which is equal to 1.